Yo, what's going on, yo? I'm JB Hoops, and today I've got my way too early big board for the 2023 draft class. So I've ranked my top 60 prospects in five tiers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like the video and subscribe. Comment what you think down below, and let's get right into it. Starting off with some honorable mentions, I've got 30 guys I'm listing here. There's 12 freshmen, 12 returners, and six international guys that I think are worth keeping an eye on. There's obviously going to be a ton of prospects that have just missed out. And let's just start it off with tier 5 with my prospects ranked 60 through 43. Starting the big board off at 60, I have Jalen Worley, the 6'6 sophomore out of Florida State. I think Worley's set for a huge year at Florida State this year. He's athletic, has good bursts, and can get to the rim at ease. He's an effective playmaker and ball handler and can play multiple positions. And then he's also a great all-around defender with impressive defensive instincts, and that's reflected by his 3.6 steal percentage and 1.8 block percentage. And I definitely think Jalen Worley could break out this year, so make sure to keep an eye on him. At 59, I have VCU sophomore Jaden Nunn. He's a great spot-up shooter who shot 36% from three, and he even showed some promising stuff off the dribble. He's a great point-of-attack defender with really quick hands and a steal percentage of three. He has a solid handle and good burst to get downhill. He has a smooth-looking pull-up and can get to his spots in the mid-range, and I expect him to have a big year with more usage and on-ball reps at VCU. Next up, I have Alex Fudge, the 6'8 sophomore headed to Florida. He's an excellent athlete and a really great defensive prospect with over a 7 foot wingspan. He moves extremely well laterally and has the ability to defend multiple positions. He has great hands and shot blocking instincts. He's a solid passer too. He is still very raw offensively, but the flashes are so impressive, so I definitely think he's worth keeping an eye on. So right now, I have Alex Fudge at 58. At 57, I have Taron Armstrong, the 6'5 point guard out of California Baptist. Armstrong is an elite playmaker, easily one of the best passers in college basketball. He's great in the pick and roll, has soft touch around the basket and a really nice floater. He's solid defensively, good in passing lanes and really good at closing out and contesting shooters. Overall, he's solid defensively, but he will likely struggle guarding quicker and more explosive players. But the swing skill for Taron Armstrong is definitely his shooting. He needs to improve his efficiency overall, but especially from behind the three-point arc. At 56, I have one of the most productive college basketball players from last year, that being Baylor Shireman, the 6'7 junior who transferred to Creighton. He is a sniper from three, shot an amazing 46.9%. He can shoot it off movement, spot up, and even create for himself. He has good size and is a really good facilitator as well. Defensively, he will probably struggle against better athletes, but with his overall offensive game, he's definitely an NBA caliber talent. At 55, I have one of the more raw prospects in the entire class, that being Rayon Rupert, the 6'8 French wing who will play for the New Zealand Breakers. I think it's pretty likely he'll struggle playing in the NBL, similar to Usman Jang did last year, but Rupert is an excellent defensive prospect with great size and length at 6'8 with a 7'3 wingspan. He has excellent hands to rip ball handlers, his anticipation is amazing, he moves extremely well in space, and if he puts on some size, he has the potential to guard 1 through 4. I'm also quite intrigued by his offensive game. He has a nice handle and a pretty smooth jumper with a super high release point. He isn't a phenomenal athlete, but he takes long strides to get to the bucket, and he has pretty soft touch around the rim. His length is incredible, and even though he's a very inconsistent shooter and a very raw prospect, he's definitely still a guy I think has a chance of being a first round pick. At 54, I have F.A. Abugidi, the 6'10 big man who will play in the G League Ignite. He's a great athlete and an excellent rebounder. He crashes the offensive glass hard and gets lots of easy putbacks. He's a really imposing rim protector and shot blocker with a 7'4 wingspan. He's amazing as a lob threat and he's going to get so many easy looks from Scoot Henderson. He's also a very good free throw shooter, shooting just under 80% over his two years at Washington State. He's capable of knocking down threes, but he is very inconsistent from there. But he does have solid touch around the basket, so I think there's a little bit more to his game. I think he's in a great situation with the G League Ignite, who have tons of playmakers to set him up. I'm a really strong believer in his talents, so that's why I have F.A. Abugidi at 54. Next up, I have Nolan Hickman, the 6'2 sophomore out of Gonzaga. He's a high IQ guard to look out for him making a huge leap in this upcoming season. He's very crafty with a tight handle and excellent court vision. He's good at getting downhill where he's a great finisher in the paint with soft touch and a very nice floater. Whilst he's not a very good shooter percentage-wise, I think the form looks good, he's super effective in the mid-range, and I think his 3-point percentage will increase in the upcoming season. So I have Nolan Hickman at 53. At 52, I have Isaiah Mosley, the 6'5 senior headed to Missouri. He was probably the most productive player in college basketball last season. 
He averaged over 20 points a game on excellent efficiency. He shot 50% from the field, over 40% from three, and over 90% from the line, which is crazy. He can score on all three levels and is exceptional in the mid-range. Mostly is an excellent shot creator and just makes so many tough shots. Despite being a little bit older of a prospect, he is just such a talented scorer that I think he definitely has a place in the NBA. So as of now, I have Isaiah Mosley at 52. At 51, I have Terrence Shannon Jr., the 6'6 senior headed to Illinois. He's an explosive athlete, provides a little bit of everything on the court. He's a good defender who can guard multiple positions. He's reliable as a spot-up threat. He can get downhill and finish at the basket. He's excellent at attacking off the catch and punishing bad closeouts and poor rotations. He's been a very solid prospect for years now. He's super athletic, can shoot and defend. That's what NBA teams want, so I have Terrence Shannon Jr. at 51. At 50, I have Marcus Sasser, the 6'2 senior out of Houston. He is an elite volume shooter and shot creator. He shot almost 44% from deep on over 8 attempts a game. He has range well beyond the 3 point arc and a rapid fire release. He's an incredible scorer off the dribble with a tight handle and is excellent at creating space. He has the ability to play on the ball or off the ball. He shot 48% on catch and shoot looks. Sasser has a really nice floater and good touch around the rim. And whilst he is quite undersized, he's still a great point of attack defender against guards and has super quick hands. He got injured early on last season, but I think he's going to have a huge senior year for Houston and they're going to be a very fun team to watch. Next up, I have another high IQ Gonzaga guard who I think is set to take a huge leap. That obviously being the 6'5 sophomore Hunter Salas. He's an incredible athlete with an explosive first step. He's a really good slasher who has soft touch around the basket and a very solid floater. He's an excellent cutter which makes up for his lack of shooting. Defensively, I really like what he can do both on and off the ball. He's an impressive point of attack defender with quick hands and his reaction speed and anticipation is incredible. He has a shifty handle and made some impressive plays in the mid-range. He definitely needs to shoot more threes and knock some more down. I also hope to see him get a lot more on-ball reps this season because I definitely think he could be a first-round pick. But for now, on my way too early big board, I have Hunter Salas at 49. At 48, I have Judah Mintz, the do-it-all 6'4 freshman headed to Syracuse. He's a good athlete, a tough shot maker, and he's really crafty with his pump fakes and footwork in the mid-range. He has a smooth pull-up too, and that seems to translate to threes as well. He has solid burst and a good handle to get downhill. He has soft touch around the basket, especially with his right hand. And he also has a pretty reliable floater, which is a helpful counter, specifically in the pick and roll. He's a great passer and really creative. Defensively, he's pretty solid and has really long arms. He needs to take and make more threes, but that's for sure the swing skill. But overall, I really like what Judah Mintz can do on the floor, and I have him at 48. At 47, I have Chris Murray, the 6'8 junior out of Iowa. His twin brother Keegan was just drafted 4th overall after a breakout season at Iowa, so this year it's likely Chris Murray will get a similar opportunity to showcase his talents. He's a great defender who's really versatile, I think he has the potential to guard 3-5, through five, and he had some pretty impressive defensive numbers last season. He's a great rebounder, processes the game quickly, and he's a great 3 point shooter with a smooth lefty stroke. Obviously he is an older prospect, but he's impressive both offensively and defensively, so for now I have Chris Murray at 47. At 46, I have Julian Phillips, the 6'8 freshman headed to Tennessee. He's a prototypical 3 and D wing with a little extra untapped potential. He's a good shooter off the catch with a smooth and relatively quick release. He's a really versatile defender with quick hands and quick feet, and I think he has the potential to guard 2 through 4. He's a great cutter and active on the offensive glass. He's a strong finisher inside and a very good straight line driver who can finish with either hand around the basket. He's also a solid passer who can make quick reads. He can definitely be more consistent as a shooter. And if he were to show some self-creation flashes, I can definitely see myself putting him higher than 46. At 45, I have Damian Collins, the 6'9 sophomore out of Kentucky. Collins is an elite athlete, incredible as a role man, and is obviously an amazing lob threat. Defensively, he's super mobile and has a massive 7'5 wingspan, making him a massive deterrent around the rim. He had an excellent 10.8 block percentage last year, and over the offseason in some international games, he flashed some things off the bounce, showed off his nice looking pull up jumper. I think his touch is promising both around the basket and from the stripe. And if Damian Collins can truly stretch the floor, I think he'll probably be a first round pick. 
At 44, I have Collins freshman teammate Chris Livingston. The 6'7 forward is a powerful athlete. Defensively, he's very versatile, and I think he'll be able to guard two through four. He's strong as hell, bouncy, can shoot it, and has excellent range. He'll need to be more consistent as a shooter and decision maker, but I like his jump shot mechanics. He can handle the ball a little bit, and I think he's a very intriguing prospect for Kentucky. But for now, I have Chris Livingston at 44. Rounding out tier five, I have another top high school prospect, that being Amari Bailey. The 6'5 combo guard headed to UCLA. He's someone I can see jumping a ton of guys during the season. He's a strong combo guard who is very fluid but also a very explosive athlete. He has a nice handle, can get two feet in the paint whenever he wants. He's a good decision maker and he's very good at manipulating defenders to create scoring opportunities. He can operate in the pick and roll, he's amazing in transition and his first step is excellent. I'm not quite as high as most people are on him. Defensively I think he's very average and his shooting needs a lot of work. But as for his defense, he has all the physical tools to be excellent. So I think there's a decent chance Amari Bailey rises a lot this draft cycle. But I could also see him being a two-year guy. But Amari Bailey comes in at 43, rounding off tier 5. Real quick, I would also like to shout out BetUS. Sign up right now for a 125% sign up bonus. The link will be in the description and in the comments if you want to make some money. And let's get back to the video. Now we're moving into tier 4 with my prospects ranked 42 through 24. At 42, I have Mike Miles, the 6'2 junior guard for TCU. Miles is an excellent creator in the pick and roll. He's a tremendous passer and a super quick processor and decision maker. He has soft touch around the basket and a ton of creation upside. He's comfortable pulling up from deep and getting to his spots in the mid range. And although he didn't shoot the ball particularly well last season, he has nice mechanics and a quick trigger, and he was much more efficient in his freshman year. Mike Miles is a good perimeter defender, he has quick hands and a good motor, he fights hard around screens and uses his strong body to keep on balance. I think for him to make any significant first round noise he needs to be more efficient. He shot it really poorly from behind the arc and at the rim. And because he is quite undersized there will always be question marks so I think he will have a fair bit to prove this season. At 41 I have Trayvon Brazil, the 6'9 Arkansas transfer. He's an explosive athlete and a great shot blocker. Brazil has incredible length, great defensive instincts, and he moves really well in space. So he's super versatile on the defensive end. Offensively, he's a good play finisher, has soft touch, and is a good lob threat. He's really quick as a rim runner and can get a lot of easy buckets, but he can also stretch the floor and knock down the occasional three. He will need to put on some size and cut down on some of the turnovers, but I think he's set for a big sophomore year on a very good Arkansas team. At 40, I have the 6'7 freshman headed to Michigan, Jet Howard, also son of Juwan Howard, the coach. Jet Howard is a big shot creator with a nice looking stroke and a really quick release. He has impressive burst and has no trouble getting downhill and finishing at the rim. Defensively, he's very solid and can make plays on that end and match up against multiple positions. His handle can be quite loose at times, but he's got the moves, great size, and some passing chops, so I'd like to see more of what he can do with the ball in his hands. At 39, I have Matthew Cleveland, the 6'7 sophomore out of Florida State. He's another great athlete in this class, there's so many of them. Defensively, I really liked what I saw from him last season. He has amazing length, he's really good at containing guys on the perimeter, and I think can guard one through three. Although he didn't get too many reps last year, he can operate in the pick and roll and get downhill, where he's obviously a great finisher at the basket with excellent body control. I was also impressed by some of the handle and passing flashes last season, but the swing skill is definitely the shot. He shot horrendously on jump shots last season and very bad from the line as well. But his jumper doesn't look too broken and he had some nice pull up middies last season. So I think it's just a matter of the shots not falling and I think it'll fall more this season. 38, I have Deron Holmes the second, the 6'10 sophomore out of Dayton. He's a great athletic big who is extremely long. Holmes is an elite shot blocker and a very good overall rim protector. He moves well in space, is good with angles, and is able to hold his own when matched up against guards and wings. Offensively, he's the ideal play finisher. He dunks everything, is an elite lob threat, is super effective as a role man, and he's also pretty quick on the break. I also think there's a little bit more to his game. His touch inside is very promising. His mid-range jumper also looks clean, but I'd like to see him shoot it better from the line. I think if he started taking and making more threes, he would definitely be a first round prospect. But for now, I have Deron Holmes a second at 38. At 37, I have the 6'7 Houston freshman Terrence Arsenault. He's a big guard with the skill set and tools to do it all. He's a fluid athlete, but where I was most impressed with his game is on the defensive end. His ground coverage is super impressive. He has a near 7 foot wingspan, as well as great timing and instincts to be an effective weak side shot blocker. 
Offensively, he's a tough shot maker with a smooth shooting stroke. He's good at getting downhill and finishing at the basket. He can handle the ball, has impressive feel, and really awesome passing vision as well. For now, I have Terrence Arsenal at 37, but he's definitely someone I think could rise into my top 20 pretty quickly. At 36, I have Tyrese Hunter, the 6'1 sophomore headed to Texas. Hunter's an excellent athlete. He's really quick when he gets downhill and has some incredible bounce. He's a great playmaker and can make some really impressive passing reads. He can pass with either hands through extremely tight windows, and he's excellent at finding his cutters, shooters, and his role man. Tyrese Hunter is a really great point of attack defender with great lateral quickness. He has super active hands and is really good at just getting his hand in there and racking up steals. Tyrese Hunter has good touch around the basket and a nice floater, but he also has the ability to take contact and adjust his shot as well as draw fouls. Shooting is the major area of improvement for Tyrese Hunter. He has a quick release and nothing terrible mechanics wise, but he was just really streaky over the course of last season. And apart from the few games where he caught fire from deep, he really struggled as a shooter and teams just weren't respecting his shot. At 35, I have City Sissoko, the 6'8 guard who will play for the G League Ignite. Sissoko can play multiple positions. I think he'll be really solid next to Scoot Henderson, Leonard Miller, and the rest of the G League Ignite guys. He's an excellent passer who can make quick reads and precision passes with either hand. He has a pretty quick first step and he's a really strong finisher inside. His touch on his jumpers and around the basket still has a long way to go, but defensively he's super versatile, has excellent size, moves well laterally, and has super active hands. And from what I've seen, his defensive instincts off the ball are really impressive as well. Obviously, his shooting will be the swing skill. He's generally very streaky and has a lot of bad misses. But I think playing for the G League Ignite is a perfect environment for him. Although the spacing might not be the best, he'll have a lot of time to improve. So for now, I have him at 35. Next up, I have Harrison Ingram, the 6'7 sophomore out of Stanford. He's a strong and versatile forward who's a really great ball handler and playmaker. He's a good isolation scorer who can also take guys out of the post. He has excellent footwork and he's really strong when getting downhill. He's a capable three-point shooter, but he has to get his feet set and his release isn't particularly quick. I also don't think his context is very good. He was kind of forced to play as a first option, which he isn't, but he'll have to improve his overall efficiency as well as shooting consistency. Defensively, he had his moments, but I think he can be a lot better. At 33, I have Eric Gaines. The 6'2 junior headed to UAB. Eric Gaines is an elite athlete with dunk contest like bounce and explosiveness. He's a shifty ball handler and a menacing point of attack defender. He has excellent hands, a 6'9 wingspan, as well as a 4.4 steal percentage, and he also has great shot blocking timing and instincts too. He can get to the rim whenever he wants, his first step is incredible, and he's great at getting to the line where he knocked down a promising 79.3% of his attempts. Gaines is a good playmaker with great vision, but he needs to work on the turnover issue. I think Gaines can be a first round pick, but he needs to improve his overall efficiency. And he's also listed at only 150 pounds, so adding some muscle would definitely benefit his game a lot. At 32, I have Julian Strawther, the 6'7 junior out of Gonzaga. He's a great shooter with a lightning quick release, although his release point is a little low. Strawther is an excellent off-ball mover who can knock down threes, get some buckets in the mid-range, and also finish inside. He's a solid defender who can match up against twos and threes. He has a 6'10 wingspan and really good defensive instincts. He has soft touch at the basket and in the mid-range. He has the ability to make plays in transition, and I just think he's going to be a really good role player. So for now, I have Julian Strawther at 32. At 31, I have Tyrese Proctor, the 6'5 freshman headed to Duke. Proctor is one of the best passers in the class. He has great size for a guard and can use it to see over the defense and find his teammates wherever they are. He's also rapidly improved as a shooter too. His mechanics are super clean and his release is quick. He's solid defensively, he's a good athlete, and has nice touch and body control when attacking the rim. I think he'll need to tighten up his handle if he wants to get on-ball reps at Duke, and I think he'll also need to get stronger to match up with bigger and better athletes. He was super impressive for Australia at the FIBA Asia Cup. So at this point, I have Tyrese Proctor at 31, but I can see him rising quickly. At 30, I have James Nagy, the 6'10 big playing for Barcelona. He's a dominant athlete at such a young age. He's one of the youngest guys in the class. He excels in the conventional role of a big man. He sets great screens, attacks the offensive glass, is a great lob threat, and defensively, he's an excellent rim protector. Nagy also has some nice footwork and solid touch around the basket, as well as impressive feel as a passer and with his positioning on both ends of the floor. He's an athletic freak and super impactful on both ends of the floor. So right now, I have James Nagy at 30. At 29, I have Dylan Mitchell, the 6'7 freshman headed to Texas. Dylan Mitchell is insanely athletic. He has soft touch around the basket with a nice jump hook. 
but he is overly reliant on his left hand. He has a solid handle with a few moves and counters when getting downhill. On the defensive side of the ball is where I like his game the most. He can be an impactful off-ball defender and get some monster blocks. He can also switch onto and contain guards and wings. He moves well laterally, is pretty good with angles, and is really strong. He has a decent looking jumper both in the mid-range and from three, but his willingness to shoot and his shooting consistency will definitely be the swing skill. He also plays a lot bigger than 6'7 and is a presence on the offensive glass, so I think it will be interesting to see his official measurements, because I think he definitely could be bigger than 6'7. At 28, I have 6'11 Duke freshman Kyle Filipowski. He's a really talented shooter with clean mechanics. He's an impressive athlete and he's really fluid. He has the ability to take his defender off the dribble and get to the rim in the half court. He has good touch around the basket and can effectively play out of the post, spot up on the perimeter, or play with the ball in his hands. He can grab and go off the glass, handle in the open floor, but he's also a very smart decision maker with impressive passing skills. Filipowski is a capable defender. He can protect the rim and also hold his own against quicker players on the perimeter. I think that will definitely be the question is whether he can hold up defensively, but from what I've watched so far, I think he'll be fine. So for now, I have Kyle Filipowski at 28. Next up, I have Maxwell Lewis, the 6'7 sophomore out of Pepperdine. He's an excellent defensive prospect with a 3.3 steal percentage and a 3.0 block percentage as a wing. He has great size and is an incredible athlete. He's great in passing lanes, has quick hands, and is a really good shot blocker. He's a super versatile defender, he can match up against multiple positions. He can play off ball defense as well as really lock up on the ball. Offensively, he's good with the ball in his hands, but he can also play off the ball as he's a really solid shooter. He needs to clean up some things as a creator and take more care of the ball. And he has a few defensive lapses at times, but I really like his athleticism and defensive potential. So right now I have Maxwell Lewis at 27. At 26, I have UCLA freshman Adembona. He's just another top tier athlete in an incredibly athletic class. He has a massive 7 foot 6 wingspan and is an incredible shot blocker. He excels in drop coverage, but he has very good lateral quickness too, so he can step up and guard the perimeter if needed. Offensively, Bona is an elite lob threat. He's a beast in the open floor and has a solid functional handle. He can also face up and take guys off the dribble and is relentless on the offensive glass. At the FIBA under 20s, he was just a monster, averaging 17 points and almost 11 rebounds as well as 2.4 blocks, while shooting an impressive 66.2% from the field. I think there's also a bit more to his game offensively. He has soft touch around the basket and is a solid free throw shooter, so I think eventually we'll see him taking jumpers, but for now I have a Den Boner at 26. At 25, I have JJ Starling, the 6'4 freshman headed to Notre Dame. He's an excellent shooter with a quick trigger, he can shoot it in just about any way, he can shoot it off movement, come off screens, spot up from deep as well as pull up from anywhere off the dribble. Overall he's just a tough shot maker with a really deep back. Starling has a tight handle and is very shifty, he has good burst and a quick first step so he can get to the basket, where he has soft touch and a pretty solid floater but he can also take and finish through contact. He's a good passer and decision maker who really likes to push the pace and I really like JJ Starling's game so I have him at 25. Rounding out tier 4, I have Leonard Miller, the 6'10 wing out of the G League Ignite. Leonard Miller is a very raw prospect who could have definitely gotten drafted in this last draft, and I think the Ignite will be great for his development, and he definitely should be a first round pick. His talent is incredible, he's 6'10 with a 7'2 wingspan, he can put the ball on the floor and has a nice bag of moves and counters. He's a fluid athlete who moves extremely well on both ends of the floor. He has soft touch around the basket and I think defensively he's got some nice potential. I think the jump shot is the main question. He has excellent touch and it seems to work for him, but I think it does probably need to be revamped. And guys with his size and skill set are very rare. So for now I have Leonard Miller as the top guy in tier 4 at 24. Now we're moving on to tier 3 with my prospects ranked 23 through 12. Starting us off at 23 I have Anthony Black, the 6'7 freshman headed to Arkansas. He's a big guard with excellent vision and passing creativity. Black's a great athlete, he can get downhill and finish through contact. He's also excellent in transition. He's super quick and does a great job of kicking the ball ahead to his teammates running the break. He moves well and is really active defensively. He gets in passing lanes and keeps his man in front well. And he's also a really high IQ help defender as well. I'm a little lower on Anthony Black than Consentis. He doesn't look very confident in his shot and has shot pretty poorly over the last year, so I think that's a big area of improvement for him this season. I'm also really unsure of his NBA role and his ability to play off the ball, so I think he'll have to shoot it more and be more efficient, but as of now I have Anthony Black at 23. At 22 I have Grady Dick, the 6'8 freshman headed to Kansas. 
Grady Dick is an elite shooting talent with a really high and quick release, and I think he could be one of the best shooters in college basketball next season. He can spot up, come off screens, and even drain pull-ups. He's also a good connective passer with good vision, and he often makes the correct reads. I think he should be a good team defender at minimum and a competent on-ball defender, and I think he should be able to match up against most twos and threes. He doesn't have a great handle and his burst is kind of underwhelming, so I think he may struggle to get to the rim against better defenses, but he's a great shooter with some nice shot creation upside as well. He can pass, he's solid defensively, and all this at 6'8 with a 6'10 wingspan, so as of now I have Grady Dick at 22. At 21, I have the 6'7 freshman out of Arkansas, Jordan Walsh. Walsh is a great athlete and an excellent slasher. He's one of the best defensive prospects in the class. He's a super versatile defender with great size and an incredible 7'3 wingspan. His insanely long arms help him to contain ball handlers on the perimeter and contest and make finishes difficult inside. But what's amazing about Walsh is he also has a pretty tight handle and is really quick in the open floor, so he has the ability to grab and go off the glass and push the pace in transition. Walsh is also a really solid passer who can use either hand. He's a quick processor who can make live dribble kicks to corners and cutters, and I really like what he can do with the ball in his hand. Walsh is a solid spot up shooter with nice mechanics, but I still think he'll have to prove he can be a consistent 3 point threat, and he also showed some promising things as a self creator. He is a tiny bit heavy footed, but that is very nitpicky. Overall, he just has great defensive instincts, IQ, and physical tools, and I can definitely see him being a lottery pick in this year's draft. At 20, I have Johan Traore the 6'11 freshman headed to Auburn. Traore is still quite raw as a prospect, but he has great size and is a really fluid athlete. He can handle a bit and create scoring opportunities for himself from all three levels. He's a good lob threat and roll man and is excellent as a rim runner. He's absolutely money in the mid range. He has good touch and a developing three ball as well as a really solid post game and all the defensive tools to be excellent. He defends well in space, has a great motor, and is a really imposing shot blocker and rim protector. He has a 7-3 wingspan and all the tools to be great. He's super athletic, and I really like his two-way potential, so I have Johan Traore at 20. At 19, I have the 6'4 freshman headed to Kentucky, Kaysen Wallace. Wallace is an absolute monster on the defensive end. He's super intense with great strength and foot speed, and he's probably one of the best point of attack defenders of the last few drafts. He's a good athlete and a really strong finisher at the rim. He has good footwork inside as well as soft touch with either hand, and he also has a pretty nice floater in his bag. Wallace can create for himself a little bit, but at times he does struggle to create separation off the bounce, but he's also a very talented passer with excellent vision. He's a really solid shooter with deep range as well, so I do kind of expect him to play off the ball at Kentucky a little bit more, but I think ideally with his passing skills, he's probably best suited to the point guard position. But in order for him to earn more lead guard responsibilities, he will need to tighten up his handle, and I think the biggest questions around his game will be regarding his ability to create space off the bounce, but I really believe Casey Wallace could be one of the best two-way guards in the club class and a really good NBA player so I have him at 19. At 18 I have Nikola Juricic, the 6'8 guard out of Serbia. Juricic is a polished scoring prospect with great size and strength. He has soft touch around the basket and can finish with either hand and he's really good at leveraging his frame to create separation, draw fouls or finish through contact. He's a really good playmaker with excellent court vision and he's great at creating easy looks for his teammates in the half court and in transition. He has a smooth pull up in the mid range and that range seems to extend out to the 3 point arc where he's also really good at getting on balance after making a move. Jurisic is a solid catch and shoot threat with a quick release and although he isn't a great athlete for NBA standards, his handle, shiftiness and deceptive burst help him to beat guys off the bounce. Jurisic was excellent in the game against Amen, Asar and the OTE team. He dropped 24 points making all 4 of his 3 point attempts along with 6 assists. The turnovers were an issue but I'm not too worried because he's such an excellent playmaker. The main area of improvement is obviously defense. He doesn't move particularly well in space and he'll likely always struggle defending on the perimeter. He does get caught on a lot of screens and doesn't give consistent effort on the defensive end. But overall, he's an amazing offensive prospect at 6'8", so I have Juricic at 18 for now. At 17, I have Brandon Miller, the 6'9 freshman headed to Alabama. Miller is an incredible athlete. There's clips of him jumping over people and dunking it. He has a pretty good handle at 6'9 and can create separation off the bounce. He can get to the cup on his own or knock down pull-ups in the mid-range or from deep. On the interior, he has pretty good touch, but he loves to dunk it every time he gets a chance to. He has a really quick jumper with smooth mechanics, and defensively he's another great prospect in this draft. He moves well laterally on the perimeter, has great length and really good hands, 
and is also very impactful as a weak side shot blocker. I really like Brendan Miller's two-way potential. I think he has star upside with his size, handle, and scoring package, but right now I have Brandon Miller at 17. At 16, I have Amoni Bates, the 6'9 sophomore headed to Eastern Michigan. Now, there is some stuff going on off the court that I'm not sure how it will work out. I'm hoping he's fine to play this season, and this is kind of assuming he will. But as for his basketball skills, he was an elite prospect throughout his high school career, and despite struggling in his freshman season after reclassifying, I still have a ton of belief in Amoni Bates' skill set and talent translating to the NBA level. In my opinion, a lot of people were writing him off too early. He only played in 18 games last season, was cast in a role playing to his weaknesses at the age of 17. His self-creation talent at 6'9 is wild, he can really shoot it, and I think the numbers across the board will be a lot better if he plays this year. I do recognise he needs to show some secondary skills, there will be questions around his decision making, can he hold up defensively, he will also need to put on some size and he does really struggle finishing around the basket, and his measurements were also pretty poor last year, but I just think he's too talented of a prospect to completely write off this early, so at 16 I have Amoni Bates. At 15, I have Gigi Jackson, the 6'9 freshman headed to South Carolina. He reclassified into this draft class, he's barely eligible so he's probably the youngest guy in the class and his skill set is just incredible. He's a great athlete and is really explosive. He's a really good finisher inside, he can attack the offensive glass but also finish around the rim with soft touch. Defensively he moves really well, he's strong, has long arms and I think he'll be able to defend both forward spots and potentially even the 5 at times. He has quick enough foot speed and great mobility to switch onto guards where he can use his length and strength to his advantage. His jumper is improving and his mechanics are pretty solid, so I think it'll be a pretty significant part of his game in the near future. Jackson's also very effective in the mid-range and has good vision so he can be really damaging in the short roll. His shooting will definitely be the swing skill, but I also hope he's used as a 3 or 4 rather than confined to a big man role, because I think his handle and first step is incredible. He's a great slasher with pretty good vision, so if he can improve on his perimeter game, I would definitely be comfortable labelling him a top 10 prospect in this draft. At 14, I have Baba Miller, the 6'11 freshman headed to Florida State. He is absolutely huge, there's a pic of him and Giannis where he looks taller, so he's probably closer to 7 foot. He's super mobile and an incredibly versatile defender with a 7 foot 3 wingspan. I expect him to showcase his switchability a ton at FSU in this upcoming season. He is still quite raw offensively, but the flashes of self-creation, playmaking ability and shooting have been very promising. He possesses fluidity similar to Usman Jang from last year. He's a strong finisher inside and great at using his physical tools to his advantage. And I think Bubba Miller has a ton of upside. His two-way potential is just insane, but for now I have him at 14. Rounding out tier 3, I have a pair of sophomores who can potentially break out next season. First up at 13, I have Terquavion Smith, the 6'4 sophomore headed to NC State. Smith is a great shot creator and he really has the ball on a string. He's a good shooter off the catch and off the dribble. He's a good passer with impressive feel. He holds his own on the defensive end, has great hands. The main area he'll need to work on is his body. He's not great at finishing inside and I think the wiry frame certainly doesn't help. But he has soft touch around the basket, is a really crafty scorer and an excellent shooter, so I expect him to take a significant leap in this upcoming season, seeing as he will now be the guy for NC State. So I have Turquavion Smith at 13. My final prospect in tier 3 is Arthur Kaluma, the 6'8 sophomore out of Creighton. I think he's going to put together an incredible season. He has a strong frame, but he's also a super explosive athlete. He can play in several different roles. He can create for himself with his tight and shifty handle as a 6'8 strong body forward. He's a good decision maker and can get to the paint at will. He's also a very willing shooter and was super impressive playing for Uganda at the World Cup qualifiers. He has good defensive instincts and a 7 foot wingspan. He's a relentless worker, moves very well in space, takes contact well and projects as a switchable and really versatile defender. I really like his handle and shot creation upside. I think he'll become a respectable three-point shooter as well. So I'm obviously super high on Arthur Kaluma, and he is my top returning prospect. And that's why I have him ranked as my 12th best prospect heading into the 2023 season. Now we're moving on to tier 2 with my prospects ranked 11 through 3. Starting tier 2 at 11, I have Kalel Ware, the 7 foot freshman headed to Oregon. Kalel Ware is a super skilled and athletic big man prospect who could potentially be a top 10 pick. He can just about do everything on the floor, he has an insanely long wingspan, he can run the break, be effective in the dunker spot as a lob threat, but he can also handle the ball and pass as well as shoot the 3. 
He dunks everything he can inside. Defensively, he's a great shot blocker and rim protector. And overall, Kalil Ware just has a super well-rounded game. I would like to see him play with more consistent intensity, but I'm pretty sure that'll come along playing against better competition in higher stakes environments. His conditioning seems to be what's holding him back at this point. In a few of the games I've watched, he seemed quite out of breath, but with his size, athleticism, and skill set, he's definitely a first round prospect and will probably be a lottery pick in this upcoming draft. Coming in at 10, I have Derek Lively, the 7 1 freshman headed to Duke. He has put on a ton of muscle recently and some of the picks I've seen of him are just insane. But as for his game, he's an elite lob threat, can stretch the floor and score in the post. Defensively, he's very mobile, can switch onto guards, and he's also a very good shot blocker and rim protector. I also like what I've seen from him as a passer. He has impressive vision and is a really good decision maker. And I think he'll definitely be a floor spacer at the next level. His jump shot looks beautiful, the mechanics are super clean and the release is pure. I think my main concerns around his game was how he would deal with physicality, but looking at the recent picks, he looks absolutely huge. So I can definitely see him rising even higher than he is right now, but for now I have Derek Lively at 10. At 9, I have Jarris Walker, the 6'8 freshman headed to Houston. Walker has a really strong build, he can do a bit of everything on the floor. He's really strong when getting downhill and finishing inside, but he also uses his strength really well on the defensive end when matched up against bigger guys. He's a versatile defender with the quickness, size, and strength to comfortably defend 2 through 4. He's also another very explosive athlete in this class. The most impressive part of his game, however, is his passing vision. He's a quick processor with amazing feel and a really solid handle. With his handle and athleticism, he can push the pace off the glass, make quick reads, or just throw down a monster dunk in transition. The swing skill is definitely a shot. He has pretty solid mechanics, and he's going to be in the spotlight a lot on a very talented Houston team. But as of now, the shooting is the biggest area for him to improve. But I really like his all-around game, so I have Jarris Walker coming in at 9. At 8, I have Asar Thompson, the 6'7 wing out of the overtime elite. Both the Thompson twins are incredible athletes, and Asar Thompson uses that athleticism on both ends of the court and is an excellent two-way prospect. He has excellent burst to beat his defender off the bounce. He has solid touch around the basket, and his body control is incredible. Asar is also a very solid passer with great vision. I also think he's one of the best defensive prospects in the class. He has incredible reaction speed and can effectively defend multiple positions. He's also a very imposing weak side shot blocker. The shot obviously needs a ton of work and his handle definitely needs to tighten up as well, but with his slashing and playmaking on the offensive end and versatile skill set on the defensive end, I really like what Asar Thompson can do, so I have Asar Thompson coming in at 8. Coming in at 7, I have Dariq Whitehead, the 6'6 wing headed to Duke. I really like Dariq Whitehead's all-around game and he has the potential to be a star. He's a good shooter with a really smooth stroke, he can shoot it off movement, off the dribble and as a spot up threat. He's a great athlete, can play on the ball as well as off the ball. His handle is solid and he's a really nice playmaker. Defensively he's long, smart and switchable, with great size and strength to match up against multiple positions. He'll be really comfortable guarding wings, but could also hold his own against some ones and some smaller fours. He's still got a lot of room to improve and he is super young, but I just don't think there's one thing he particularly excels at which I like in my top prospects. But I do really believe in his long term upside, coming in at 7. At 6, I have Nick Smith Jr., the 6'5 freshman headed to Arkansas. Smith has a silky smooth jump shot, he's a really good athlete, has some passing chops, and is an elite scoring prospect. He has good size for a combo guard and can really get it done on both ends of the floor. He has a super deep bag, can create a lot of separation off the bounce. His jumper is pure, quick, and effortless, and he has range extending to well beyond the three-point line. He can also get downhill and finish at the rim with his great body control and soft touch. He can create for himself, facilitate for his teammates. He has a great motor and tries really hard defensively and has a 6 foot 9 wingspan. I really like his two-way potential. I think he's going to be one of the best scorers in college basketball. So right now, I have Nick Smith Jr. at 6. Coming in at 5, I have Cam Whitmore, the 6'7 freshman headed to Nova. Whitmore is an insane athlete with dunk contest-like bounce. He's quick in transition and an explosive leaper. He dunks absolutely everything. He has a decent handle with counters when attacking downhill. His first step is amazing as well. He can pass and he's shown his ability to play off the ball as he's improved drastically as a shooter. And defensively, he's super disruptive. He has great hands and anticipation. And with his strength, quickness and length, he has the potential to be super switchable on the defensive end. As of now, I'm super high on Cam Whitmore's game. His bounce and explosiveness is just incredible. And if he can continue knocking down threes at even a 
decent clip, I'm extremely confident he'll be a top 10 pick. He can obviously be more consistent on both ends and I think his handle needs to tighten up a bit, but his skill set and talent is just incredible and he's an insane prospect, so I have Cam Whitmore at 5. At 4 I have the 6'4 freshman headed to Baylor, Keontae George. In my opinion, Keontae George is the best scoring prospect in the class. He's a pure shooter with a rapid release. He can play off the ball as a shooter, come around screen, spot up from distance, and he's a really good shot maker off the bounce. He has a tough handle and is a very strong finisher inside with excellent body control. He's not an elite athlete by NBA standards, but he's still very impressive with his burst and quickness. But don't get me wrong, he can still get up there for some powerful dunks. George is also a very crafty scorer. He has such a deep self-creation bag. He's also great at changing pace to create an advantage. Defensively, he's always competing. He has impressive lateral quickness, is strong and gets low in his stance, and he has very good off-ball defensive instincts as well. He reminds me a bit of Bradley Beal and Jaden Hardy from last year's class, who I was also super high on. I'm super high on Keontae George. I think he's going to average almost 20 points per game this season, and I really like what he can do on both sides of the court, so I have Keontae George at 4. At the top of tier 2, as my number 3 prospect, I have Amen Thompson, the 6'7 point guard out of the overtime elite. Amen Thompson is an elite athlete, one of one, generational bounce, quickness, explosiveness, everything, he is just insane. He's a great finisher with incredible body control and soft touch around the rim. His first and second step is amazing, and the amount of ground he can cover on both ends of the floor is just mind-blowing. Amen is also an excellent playmaker with amazing feel for the game. He makes quick reads, can pass with either hand, and has amazing vision. Defensively, he's a lockdown point of attack defender with excellent physical tools and a 6'11 wingspan. And like his brother Asar, he also has impressive instincts as a weak side shot blocker. The shot definitely needs to come along and needs a lot of work, but since last season he seems to have adjusted it a little bit and he made all of his free throws in the game against Nikola Jurisic so I have faith in him continuing to develop his shot. If Amen Thompson ever becomes a respectable shooter he's going to be an amazing NBA player even without it he's an incredible talent so for now I have Amen Thompson as my top prospect in tier 2. So now we're obviously moving into my tier 1 prospects. The top two guys on my way too early big board. And let's just get right into my second best prospect in the class, which is Scoot Henderson, the 6'3 guard out of the G League Ignite. Scoot Henderson is a tremendous athlete. His speed and explosiveness is reminiscent of a young Derrick Rose, and his body control and touch make him a constant threat to finish at the rim. Scoot Henderson is just so skilled as a prospect, he's so polished, his skill on both ends of the floor is just crazy. He also has a super effective pull up, especially in the mid range, so if you do drop to try and keep him out of the paint, that's a bucket. He's a really intense defender with excellent hands, foot speed and defensive instincts. His three point shot is definitely the major area for him to improve. But even last year as a 17 year old, I think Scoot Henderson would have been a very good NBA player. And if his three point shot continues to come along, I truly believe he has MVP potential. He was incredible last year in the G League Ignite. They're up in the games to something like 50 games, so he's going to be such a fun watch. And I seriously believe he's a contender to be the number one pick in the 2023 draft. So that obviously means my number one prospect is who else but Victor Wembanyama, the 7'4 big man out of France. You probably know all about Wembanyama, he's been hyped for years and he's really living up to that this season. He's an elite rim protector with an 8 foot wingspan, yes you heard that right. He's also super versatile on that end too and he defends well in space. He's a fluid mover, an incredible athlete and the stuff he can do on both ends of the floor is mind blowing at times. He has a nice looking jumper with an impossible to contest release point, but he can also put the ball on the floor and make plays for others. Some of the self-creation flashes recently have been incredible. He's really up in his game this season and he's one of the best prospects of all time. He does all this incredible stuff along with the regular dunking, rim running and soft touch around the basket. And I think this makes Victor Wembanyama a pretty difficult prospect to pass up on. But with how talented some of the other guys in this class, I don't even think it's a guarantee he goes number one. But I think with all he's shown and all he's going to show, it's probably pretty likely. So right now, I have Victor Wembanyama as my number one prospect in the 2023 class. And I'm really looking forward to watching a ton of basketball this season and looking at how all these guys evolve their games and get better every day. And I think for me, this is going to be an incredibly fun draft cycle. If you watched the whole video, I really appreciate it. Remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. Also sign up to BetUS if you want to get some money. Get me some money, you know, win-win. And that's all I got for this one. So Jebby Hoops, out.